Soyuz 1 was launched on April 23, 1967, 35 minutes after midnight UTC, which was close to dawn local time, from Gagarin's start at Baikonur Cosmodrome. Its main goal was to be the first crewed test of the Soyuz spacecraft, in this case the original 7K-OK type, of which a much more developed version still carries crew to orbit today. But that wasn't all. Soyuz 2 was supposed to launch as well, rendezvous and dock with Soyuz 1 on Soyuz 2's first orbit carrying three cosmonauts. Two of those cosmonauts would then EVA to Soyuz 1 and come back in it. They had to EVA because at this point Soyuz did not have a hatch along with its docking system. It was a ridiculously ambitious mission considering this was the first crewed flight of the spacecraft and obviously due to political pressure to catch up to American achievements during the Gemini program. Soyuz 1 carried Vladimir Komarov, and he would die in it, becoming the first spaceflight fatality occurring during a mission. Considering its proximity to the Apollo 1 fire, which killed three American astronauts, this mission obviously gets compared to that, and both indeed involved initial crewed tests of a spacecraft and were partly due to a rush to execute the mission. However, while on Apollo there was a certain blindness to the faults of the spacecraft and a lack of imagination concerning the issue that ultimately killed the astronauts, there was no such blindness in the case of Soyuz 1. First, the cosmonauts were quite aware what happened to the Americans and perhaps that got them thinking about their spacecraft more closely. But already, the first uncrewed test had not reached the correct orbit and had attitude control problems. It also kept shutting down its re-entry engine when they tried to activate it. On the second uncrewed Soyuz, the launch was aborted when not all the engines on the rocket ignited, but then the launch escape system fired when workers went out to the pad, killing one and injuring others. Those two tests occurred before Apollo 1 and probably already caused alarm. The third test once again had attitude control problems and while it got to orbit and seemed to return fine, it turned out that the descent module had depressurized and any crew would have died. In the wake of all this, technicians on the project made a succinct 10-page report of 203 high-risk faults on the spacecraft. Chief designer Vasily Mishin, who had taken over from Sergei Korolev after Korolev's death, was aware of the report but didn't feel like he had the political sway to delay the launch, which had been demanded from the political establishment. Korolev had developed a rapport with Khrushchev, but Mishin had no such interaction with Brezhnev. Everyone was afraid that they would lose their position if they dared suggest that the mission be delayed, and so it went forward. Nikolai Kamnin, the head of cosmonaut training, wrote in his diary a week before the launch that he was, quote, not convinced that the whole flight program will be carried out successfully, but having said that, there are not enough reasons weighty enough to object to the flight. On all previous flights, we were confident enough about the successful outcome, but now there is no such confidence, end quote. The launch was successful and Komarov became the first cosmonaut to fly to space twice, Right after that, things started to go wrong. One solar panel failed to extend, leaving the spacecraft only partly powered and some communications inoperative. The attitude control system had never been fixed and Komarov's attempt to control the ship manually were hampered by the lack of power. Gagarin communicated directly with Komarov to try and work through the problems. Soyuz 2 was still ready to go despite the issues, with the possibility that the cosmonauts on EVA could try to open the stuck solar panel on Soyuz 1 manually. A storm, however, prevented the launch of Soyuz 2 and probably saved the crew as they likely would not have survived the mission. Without a chance to get power to Soyuz 1 through an EVA, Gomorov was ordered to return after a day in orbit. With automatic systems malfunctioning, he had to conduct the re-entry manually in a way he had not trained for but did successfully. Ultimately, what doomed Komarov was the parachute. The drogue chute deployed normally but the main parachute didn't deploy and the backup parachute got entangled in the drogue. The parachute container had become deformed, causing the malfunction, and the same fault would have probably occurred on Soyuz 2. Komarov perished as his capsule was destroyed on impact. Insofar as things were under his control, he had worked through the problems and did everything he could to return safely despite the faults in his spacecraft. He is honored twice in memorials on the moon, first by a Soviet medal left behind by Apollo 11, and then on the fallen astronaut plaque left behind on Apollo 15.